change of plans. <laughs> Hi, this is Tuesday Adams. It's uh, March 3rd, 2023. I've realized it's been a long time since I've uploaded, but we've got a change of plans going on. And it's what time is it? Oh, it's about uh, a quarter after 2 p.m. I'm not sure if that's the Eastern or Central Standard. I don't know. Time, I'm not positive. Okay, well, okay, so change of plans. Okay, right, the last time I talked uh, to you, I think, I believe I made a video stating that I was working on four podcasts. I, I wrote four podcasts, probably about 20 minutes to half an hour each, where Tuesday Adams, which is me, interviews Myra Hatfield, which is me, <laughs> who wrote, you know, the book, Evidence of a Satanic Marriage, by the way. Okay, I, at, the, at the time I wrote that, back in 2018, I was like, I got to get this published before I die. I thought my life was over. Okay. I see sequels, at least two for sure, maybe, possibly three. Okay. So that's a good thing. So we'll be, uh, I'm, I'm actually in the transition right now and I apologize for, you know, um, not getting anything out there for this long, but Hey, you got to understand, you know, my son went to prison for 15 years. Okay. I had my ex-husband committed suicide. We'll talk about that in a minute. But yeah, I got my son's post conviction. My son, uh, William, well, William, my, he's my second son. Okay. Don't judge me. Don't judge him. There's ways to make good people do bad things. Okay. And if anybody knows, we do. Okay. Don't judge. All right. I've got his post conviction relief forms. Now, what would you do? If you were in my position, if you were Will, if you were Willow's mom, Billy's mom, if you were Billy's mom, what would you do? And you believed without a shadow of a doubt that your son does not belong in jail or prison for 15 years. Or he's already been in there for two years. I mean, the state messed up his life so bad. It was ridiculous. And I'm the worst one to do that to. I, I'm, I'm so glad I'm older now and I'm more... Um, wise to the things that they do to trick parents out of their children or to into thinking they aren't good enough to raise their children or they're doing something wrong. You don't love him the right way. You don't know what you're doing. A full shit. I don't make mistakes. Well, let me tell you something. I never did and I never will. But what would you do? Would you fill the paperwork out? And send and make copies and send him the copies that you that when after you file the paperwork for the post conviction relief forms or would you send him the rules and send him the forms and let him do it for himself oh mind you he's 32 years old and he's autistic he's extremely intelligent okay but he's disabled. Nobody, what would you do? Okay. <clears throat> um, well, William has a daughter who's two years old and you won't see her picture because it argued with me today. You will not see my grandchildren's photos yet. Okay. That's a huge mistake that parents, proud parents, may, and grandparents, is showing their pictures off. Okay, you want to you want to invite your enemies into your home, into your life to wreck it. Show them all your beautiful pictures, because I guarantee that's what does it. <laughs> Jealousy. Okay, so I gotta get custody of Mar of Maria, his two year old daughter, or I'm going to try. Okay, so um, my 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 oldest son was found. Dustin is alive. <laughs> He's alive with two more children. He's got three children, two daughters and one son. I was way behind on his life, but after his dad committed suicide, 
which is questionable. We'll go there in a minute. Um, it's not as dangerous for him to contact me now. It was life or death. You have to understand. I was married to a sociopath. Okay. Yes. Justin is a lot. You know, back in 2016, 17, and 18, I was flipping out because I thought he was missing. Now, as far as far as being kidnapped, oh yeah. Do you know that every single one of my son's wives and mothers of their children were daughters of women that he slept with? My ex-husband slept with all of their mothers. <laughs> Even the foster mom knew my ex-husband in the past. Do you know what that is? Stalking. Yeah. He meant to keep me away forever. Using those issues. He knew exactly what he was doing. I was questioning, you know, if my, you know, rich people are involved in this, right? <laughs> rich people, fake deaths. Marriages, they disappear. They play games with people. And they're all over my fucking life. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Well, I didn't believe my husband was dead, first of all. When my son called me and told me that he was called in to Muncie to cremate his body and take care of the funeral arrangements, he said, Mom, Dad died. I was like, no, he didn't. He's, they're, they're lying to you because I guarantee you he's going to show up in the middle of the night. He's one of them cats that sneak in. You know, most cats just steal your shit, right? No, this cat's going to kill you in your sleep. And I'm like, I'm like, you know, Freddy's coming for you. Oh, my God, this was crazy. I had to have proof. I went up to Mink's Mortuary. Cause see, what we had was this. Okay. Can you read it? Let me see. Let me get that. Okay. That's the cream. What it says is the cremated remains of my ex husband, Glenn. There it has it. Okay. Yeah, that's a box with real cremated remains in it. Who is that? Your grandma? What'd you do? Get that off the computer? Did you print it out? Stick it on there? I want proof. I went up to the health department. In Delaware County, where, because he was born in Delaware County, there's no record of his death. I went, I, you know, the police have no, nobody called the police and reported them. But the police were all over my son when he had to take care of the arrangements, which I went to the mortuary. No record. No record of his cremation, nothing. I called my son, I was like, look. I don't want to alarm you, but do you know there's no real records of your dad's death? He said, yes, there is, Mom. What did you do? I said, well, you know, I told him what I did. He said, oh, Mom, Meeks, that's where you made your mistake. It, it, was, it was Parsons. So I went to Parsons. And she finally confirmed his death. And she said, yes, we cremated his body November 22nd. 2021. Okay, well, um, okay, so that's real. Okay, so I was up good. I was, I was like, okay, closure. We're safe. Okay. So, um, but my my son has the records, the police records, and um, and the um, documents. You know, his help help um, or his uh, death certificate and things like that. He has all that, um, which. Of course, the first thing we need to do for Billy to feel safe for real and for Dustin to feel safe for real <clears throat> is we need to make copies of those records and send them to my boys because, yeah, they'll never admit it, but they were living in terror. Okay. Imagine Freddy Krueger being your daddy. Just imagine it for a second. Don't you ever judge my children for anything they did. They were good kids. And like I said, there's ways to force good kids and good people 
to do bad things. And there's reasons why they do them. Don't you ever judge me. Don't you ever judge my children. I didn't choose my ex-husband. He chose me. I had no choice. I did what I did, and I survived. My kids are alive, too. That's something to be thankful for, okay? Because it wasn't meant to be like that. He meant to kill me. He meant to kill my children. Okay, so now, listen. <clears throat> I found this. This is off my record. This is when I got arrested. Whoops. Arrested at Arby's. Eh, you see that? That was in uh, October. Let's see what that say. October twenty second of two thousand two thousand six. I was arrested while at work. Do you know what I did? I called the police, the state police, to make a report because a staff member at the children's home where my son was dressed him up in a KKK sheet with racial slurs written all over it. A hate crime. He could have got murdered. She endangered his safety because over 50% of the children's home were African American. My son has never experienced racism. He's never had a racist issue in his heart. But let me tell you something. Racism is the worst issue to develop in a blonde child, an innocent one. Don't go there. Everybody hates to address those issues, okay? I've never seen my son in my home since. And I'm getting ready to move in with him. I sold my RV. He bought me another one. And I'm leaving tonight. I'm moving from Indiana to Illinois. And I'll get back with you by Monday. I 